Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the January 3rd, 2024 meeting of the Gaithersburg Planning Commission. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Here we are in a whole new year, whole new month. Uh, Greg, no minutes tonight? Okay. No, we will have them for the next meeting. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so first up, as is the custom of our first meeting of the year, <coughs> is the election of officers. Um, first up, let me, let me call for nominations for chair, please. Mr. Chair, I nominate John Bowers, chair. Second. I, I will accept that. Any other nominations? All right, please then no. I will go. Pardon me? Please no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny's not here. That's right. Danny's not here. Sure. I sent you. <laughs> Guess what, Danny? <laughs> um, all right, great. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so with that, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And I will abstain. All opposed? Okay, that's 401. Thank you very much. Looking forward to serving you for another year. Can I have a nomination? Nominations, please, for vice chair. I nominate uh, Lloyd Kaufman. Second. Second. All right. All right. Any <laughs> other nominations? So Lloyd has been nominated for vice chair, and it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Uh, opposed? Okay. And, and Lloyd opposed, or is abstaining? <laughs> Not opposing, sorry. So that's four zero one as I well. We would still lose. Thank you for agreeing <laughs> to, uh, thank you for agreeing to serve in that. That capacity. All right, on to the serious business of the night. We have uh, site plans. And first up is AFP 970 2023 construction of two building additions totaling 3,220 square feet and 22 space parking waiver for an existing lab use at 45 West Watkins Mill Road in the I 3 industrial office park zone. This is an amendment to final site plan. Present from staff is Caroline Seiden. Good evening and Good evening. happy new year, Caroline. Happy new year to all of you. Uh, this is an amendment to final site plan uh, for a building uh, at 45 West Watkins Mill Road. Uh, applicant is AstraZeneca, and the applicant requests approval for two building additions totaling 3,220 square feet, and as part of that is requesting a parking waiver of 4.6%, which is 22 spaces. Uh, the the uh, site is up on the aerial. It's actually a parcel that's 12.7 acres and consists of actually three buildings, 25, 35, and 45 West Watkins Mill Road. It's just south of the CSX tracks, which are up to the um, top of the screen, uh, west of Watkins Mill Road and north of Clopper Road, which is down kind of off the screen. Um, Tonight, uh, Chad Kellner is here from AstraZeneca to present the application, so I'll turn it over to him. Perfect. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having us again. Um, back to talk about 45 West Watkins Mill. So um, quickly, um, Stuart Barr uh, from Lurch Early and Brewer is here. Donna Castelli from WB Engineers is behind me, as well as Brian Donnelly from um, McCreese Hendricks and Glasscock, in case we have any architectural questions that I can't answer specifically about plat E um, which is building 45 uh, it's, which is the top rectangular building on the screen there are three um, additions that we're talking about um, one of which is the square I'm just going to the, next screen. Um, the first one here um, is a two-story addition to the building which will be used for wastewater treatment and wastewater I'm sorry and purified water production and generation um, the next one that I'll talk about is on the right hand side of the building which is a an entry exit corridor for patient access so we don't have cross contamination within the lab facility itself and at the very bottom corner is um, a standby generator which is a fenced in enclosure um, for emergency power for the critical utilities within the within the space all of the additions um, will be used they'll be built with matching architectural so the building will look the same um, once it's completed as the existing which is a brick and mortar um, construction um, some elevation drawings just to give you some perspective of what's happening on the first floor um, which is all waste treatment so this is the biologics waste that has to be treated before it can be discharged out to WSSC um, so we have to make sure that there's no um, biologics in it that could be hazardous to um, pollute uh, water and on the second floor of this would be purified water generation so this is water used specifically in the 
production of the therapeutics that we will be um, injecting into the patients in 45 West Watkinsville. Um, here's an overview of what the of what the corridor looks like, which was the longer rectangular. Um, let me go back to this one. It's this 70 by 12 on the right hand side of the of the drawing. You can see it's primarily just ingress egress with clean room access um, to, for patients to get in and out. And this is what the overall rendering would look like with the elevations attached. And you can see it's still brick, um, it's still a brick facade with the internals um, supporting the, the supporting the science inside the building itself. It is not covered um, primarily because that was part of the um, impervious management that we needed to impervious surface management that we had agreed to in the previous um, Board of Appeals hearing. The stairwell is not the covered. The stairwell is not covered. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, the, the, general, the addition is, yeah. The addition is covered. The addition is covered, yeah, not, the, not stairwell the stairwell on the side. The generator um, <clears throat> is just a fenced-in generator to open air, <coughs> and this is just to hide. This is more for aesthetics than anything else, aesthetics and some security around the standby generator itself. And just so you understand, get a little bit of an idea of what's happening over there, we will be bringing patients into the into the building. We'll extract um, some specimens from them. We'll treat their specimens and then re-inject them back in, all for <coughs> um, cancer research and therapeutics. It's the primary focus of that building, um, and that was the primary driver for the urgency behind the Board of Appeals hearing that we had at the end of last year. The additions that we're proposing here with the site plan amendment allow us to stay in 45 West Watkins Mill for, um, a few, for a few years to come. They allow us to continue the research and development. There's no manufacturing happening here. This is all development activity. Um, and what this does is it also gives us the opportunity to expand our workforce within 45 with um, supporting the life sciences industry in the area bringing some new, some new jobs um, around, not only for the construction aspect, but also the science and the laboratory activities within the space. So quickly on the parking, the parking waiver piece of this, which is maybe the stickiest part, the addition, while it does move the total square footage, the addition does not require additional people to be in the building, so we don't have the need for um, additional cars to be parked. So. The space primarily is around ingress, egress, and infrastructure support, as noted on the previous slides with wastewater generation, I'm sorry, wastewater treatment and purified water generation, as well as ingress, egress of patients, not necessarily to add additional office-based people. Um, so therefore, we're proposing that we don't, we don't actually anticipate any additional vehicle traffic um, on the parcel or in the, um, in the industrial area itself as a result of this addition. Um, the, last, the last thing that I would say about that is we're not expecting, we have not had, nor are we expecting, even with our other facility at 35 West Watkins Mill, an increase in the overall demand on parking uh, for, the Bennington's, for the Bennington Center in general. So regardless of the addition or not, we're not anticipating any additional growth for vehicle traffic or parking. Let me ask a question on that. Um, part of part of the reason for one of the expansion components is um, arrival, you know, an environment for patients to arrive. You were just explaining that. Correct. But does does this increase the amount of that traffic, or is it really just a different condition for what essentially is the same inflow outflow, for lack of a better term, of your patients? It's inflow outflow of patients, and I think the total. Um, we can't have more based on how the lab space is built inside and in, in the extraction and uh, reintroduction of specimens. We can't have more than two or three patients in there at a time. It's not going to be um, like Kaiser or any of the other yeah. or urgent care where we have patients kind of in a revolving Fair enough. Okay. So most of the patients we have to extract and then reintroduce their specimens within 52 hours. So we don't have the luxury of a, a very quick turnover for patients, and we have to work on that specimen and then reintroduce it. So it's not, it's a very low turn activity in general. And you're doing that now, right? I mean, that's right. already part of the, the traffic that's coming and going from your 
Um, we have some, yes, but not as much as what it would be. So we've only done early phase studies. We'll be advancing to a later stage study. So when I say we've done some um, and we're going to increase, we might be going to three patients a week or four patients a week mm -hmm. as opposed okay. to one a week. Okay, so we're not, we're not talking 100. Okay, great. Um, so just to... And by the way, please do more if you can. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> Um, but I'm on the I'm on the operations side, not necessarily the R&D side. So we start talking about the science stuff and, and some of the constraints that I can't I can't speak to that so much. Um, so this isn't um, this is in accordance with the variance that we approved um, last year that was approved at the end of last year, um, and all of the um, all of the construction materials and the design that we have meet the staff analysis from the planning commission. Um, and everything's um, been checked off to the best of our ability. Um, so with that, um, I'll open it up for any kind of questions that you all may have for me. Anybody? You asked the question. Was um, just, just real quick, if you could um, talk about current parking usage. You know, light, medium, lots. Uh, how, many, how many people, like percentage of usage based yeah. on current parking? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have the exact figures, 70. but it's it's relatively light. I think we only have 37 or 38 people in our section of 45 West Watkins Mill, and maybe another 50 or 60 at 35. Jeez. In total, before we moved over to the current location back in 2001, um, we had 300 across the three buildings. So we're Great. significantly lower than where we were then, and we, we didn't have parking constraints, parking issues then. Is uh, are the offices open seven days a week, or is it five days a week, nine to five? What are the hours? The manufacturing component is is seven days a week. However, that's only manned by two or three people. Um, so Saturdays and Sundays are very light, um, even the off hours. So the core peak hours of the business are eight to five, uh, and that's where we would see the, the majority of traffic, like most places. Um, the manufacturing activities and the critical utilities, that would be manned 24-7. But um, again, it's only two or three people. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Um, let me do one quick uh, administrative thing. I can't see the outside um, panel on this, the viewer tonight. I can see it. Okay. Anybody queued up? Um, we probably should run the video. Just okay. So they can. Chris, would you please run the video for um, outside testimony? Good evening. If you've connected to the meeting tonight via Zoom and you're on a desktop or a laptop and you wish to make a public comment, we can't currently see or hear you. What you need to do, please, is wiggle your mouse around and look towards the bottom center of your screen. You should see a raise hand button. Go ahead and click on that now for us, please. Alternatively, if you've connected in via telephone, you can press star nine. Great, thanks. So while we're waiting to see if anybody queues up there, is there anyone in the audience tonight that would like to comment on this application? All right, no hands have flown up for that one. Um, anybody popping up on the screen? No one online. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh, Caroline, what's your recommendation, please? Staff recommends that the Planning Commission, based on the exhibit submitted, the applicant's testimony, the staff report, staff findings, and staff recommendation, grant AFP 9703-2023, amendment <coughs> to final plan approval, and the, uh, uh, the uh, subsequent or associated parking waiver, finding it in compliance with section 24-170 and 24171 of the city zoning ordinance with two conditions. Okay, great. So on the parking piece, I know we, um, we're looking at a site plan that, interestingly enough, is sort of internalized. Most of, the, most of what's going on with these buildings sort of feels like an internal court, although I guess it's public access. But to the outside, kind of the neighborhoods, they really don't see into some of these areas that, that the additions are. Um, however, I get a sense from staff is there has been no issues with parking on the street that have crowded the neighbors or anything like that from, from this not, facility. Yeah, sounds not to, not sounds to like they're knowledge. pretty well. Yeah, I, I think this functions similar to a lot of the lab spaces that have come in, in over the past few years with uh, requests for reductions in the parking uh, ratio because the lab space hmm. often the the. Uh, population in the building is just much lower than this. This was a building that was normally or was approved for office use, 
and so it's a, just a lower intensity number of right. people. Great, good to hear. Um, the other thing I want to just, I guess, mention or clarify, you have comments in here, or, or one of the conditions is that they satisfy comments from Department of Plan, Planning Department and Public Works. Anything substantive there? Was it no, there, so there were a couple of trees that were shown as being removed from the, um, uh, the site in order to uh, accommodate the building addition. So because there had been a landscape plan where those trees were approved as part of the original landscape plan, they just need to put them on a, okay. a new landscape plan and replace those trees. And then other things were just minor public works uh, details that need to be shown on the plans. That, that's all. Okay, great. Anybody hand up? Okay. Any, any concerns with the proposal? No. I would just add yeah. one piece oh, sure. of information for yeah. your own information. So typically, so for AstraZeneca, our um, square footage allotment per employee, and it's actually in meters, um, is nine square meters per employee um, for an office-based person. For a lab-based person, it's 27, just to kind of frame yeah. the reference. So it's three times more space per employee lab versus an office space person. Or a third the required parking. If you or if you want to go yeah. the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair. Makes more sense. Excellent. Just for your own information in the future. Appreciate that. Okay. I'll, and I'll, I'll just go comment ahead. from the sort of uh, waiver section. You know, this is a unique use, um, I think, in, uh, not just unique use in the overall building, which I think it is, in terms of parking counts, but it also is unique use in terms of the additions, our mechanical and, and uh, ingress, egress uh, only. So those, those unique characteristics, I believe, uh, clearly uh, allow for a waiver but it's good for the record good point for the record yeah thank you all right anything to nope. add nope. all right is there a motion please <coughs> mr. chair I move that the Planning Commission based on the exhibit submitted the applicants testimony staff report staff findings and staff recommendation granted parking waiver um, in accordance with section 24-219 B of the city zoning ordinance for 22 parking spaces Finding in conformance with section 24-222A and grant AFP 9703-2023 amendment to final plan approval. <clears throat> Finding it in compliance with section 24-170 and 24-171 of the city zoning ordinance with the two conditions as uh, read. In second. It's a moved and second and all in favor. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, thanks very much. It's exciting to see, as always, uh, the continued growth and tailoring of your activities to, to continue with uh, the research and the, the exciting exciting stuff in the future. And, and it's happening in our city, so thank you for that. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Good luck for the project. Uh, lands well. Okay. Thank you very much. See you, Mr. Barr. Um, all right, that takes us to uh, site plan number two for the night, which is SP-9631-2023. Reapproval for a two story, 6,000 square foot office building in the CD corridor development zone. Uh, this was a final site plan, and Jasmine Forbes is presenting from SEP. Good evening and Happy New Year to you, Jasmine. Happy New Year and good evening. Um, so, staff before you uh, to present final site plan application SP 9631 2023. Uh, the applicant's requesting reapproval for a two story, uh, 6,000 square foot office building. Associated Parking Waivers and uh, Final Forest Conservation Plan ENV-9630-2023. As shown on the screen, the subject property is located at 102 South Frederick Avenue and is zoned CD. Uh, this application comes before the Planning Commission in accordance with Section 24-168, uh, which requires the Planning Commission to grant final site plan approval. So the original site plan application, SP-8320-2019, uh, for this project was approved by the Planning Commission on May uh, 6, 2020, with five conditions. Uh, staff would like to note that all those conditions have been satisfied, but the original site plan had expired on March 6, 2022. Therefore, the applicant has submitted a new application and is seeking reapproval uh, for those previously approved uh, plans. Um, as per the conditions of the uh, original site plan, the applicant has expanded that one uh, parking space that was 8.5 feet to 9 feet. Uh, the applicant has incorporated uh, additional landscaping to screen that corner of that stormwater management facility wall. Uh, for the elevations for the front, the applicant um, has provided a standard uh, soldier course water table under the window on the first level and has removed the floating lintel above the door on the left elevations. So just note that these were these conditions uh, 
part of the conditions of approval of the original site plan that they have uh, satisfied, but um, no other changes have been made to the uh, site plan since its original approval. And um, that's it for presentation. Uh, I also have the project team also here with me to kind of kind of go over kind of where they are with the project. Okay. I'm uh, Brian Donnelly from Recruit Center from Glasscock. Um, you know, as uh, Jasmine had said, we're we're ge gearing back up to uh, submit permits. Um, we've gotten the sediment control stormwater uh, reapproved, uh, the right of way plan reapproved. Um, we're in the process of getting a permit from WSSC. So we hope to start construction in the spring, uh, late spring probably. And for context, what was the, what was the delay? Market? Um, I didn't hear your question, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what was the delay from, from the original approval? Why did the plan uh, that, expire? COVID for one. I mean, I think that just finances, uh, marketing, um, was the main reason? Yeah, I think it was just COVID. We were ready to go, but um, the income that we used to have went down a lot. It took me a while to get back up, but it's something that I'm very excited about trying to get going. Okay. Start yeah, the plan expired in 22, is that? Yes. That's um, correct, and they, they missed the, the time to get an extension. They could have came in, I think, a right. month before to get an extension, but they never came in. Okay. Was, so was there a reason for that, or was it just an oversight? or? Um, just financially, COVID hit us pretty hard. I have a law office in Rockville and one in Wheaton and one in Langley Park, and this was going to be the fourth office, and COVID just really... I just mean administratively why why you didn't extend the plan when there was an opportunity to do that? I think just not knowing what I was doing, <laughs> which is ignorance. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just that we were overwhelmed with COVID and just kind, okay. of, just kind of took a back burner. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else on the presentation? Or? No? Okay, any questions? No. Okay. You've been through it. Previously approved. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do the um, online uh, video again, please, for anybody watching. It is the same person actually online, so I don't think we need to rerun the video. Okay. Um, if they're listening, if they want to find a decimal, they can just raise their hand. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that if you would. Mm -hmm. Is anyone, uh, is there anybody in the audience here who would like to comment on this application? Please come on up to the podium. And we just ask for your name and either address or neighborhood if you don't want to give out your address, and you'll have three minutes to, to comment. Okay. Uh, name is Alex Feldman. I live at Four Cedar Avenue, just across the street from uh, the proposed development. Uh, first, congratulations on your election. Sure. Nice chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, just like I say, we welcome any development. I'm very excited about this, truly. Um, but just a couple considerations uh, as residents on, on Cedar Avenue. Um, the, the first being, you know, what are the intended uses for those office spaces? Congestion on Cedar Avenue, um, especially over the weekend, is significant uh, when it comes to street parking. Uh, up to George Street from 355, you know, between half and two-thirds of the street on Cedar Avenue, both sides are occupied. Uh, and so, you know, we counted about 17 or so parking spaces uh, available in the, at least the site plan from four years ago. Um, you know, first of all, uh, with the intended use, is there a thought on could those spaces be used over the weekend to support traffic, uh, rather parking on Cedar Avenue? Uh, and beyond that, uh, has the architect developer considered anything when it comes to an entrance on 355 as Cedar Avenue becomes more congested, as it is a significant cut through between 355 and Muddy Branch? Um, is there any thought of allowing traffic to come in from 355 to the parking lot, vice from Cedar Avenue into the parking lot? Um, and then the only other thought for the setback waiver, um, we just ask you know, consideration when it comes to you know the, the high foot traffic on 355 in that area with all the churches and especially the large uh, at this point, what ends up being a parking lot for a church on 355 just beyond the property uh, on the right-hand side if you're heading south on 355. Um, what that setback does, what the waiver, I guess, does, I, I understand, I think it's maybe only five feet, five, five or 15 feet, I'm not sure. Um, but what that does when it comes to, you know, allowing the vehicle traffic to safely ensure that 
while I understand you know there is an unregulated foot traffic across 355, it's still there. At, you know we have made efforts to try to get a crosswalk when it comes to Cedar Avenue across 355. You know the the I understand that's a state issue. Uh, they haven't entertained it, but regardless, you know the traffic exists. Uh, 30 seconds. Okay, the traffic exists, and it's something to consider. You know, does that setback affect the safety of people crossing from that uh, effectively dirt parking lot to the large church across the street uh, when it comes to visibility? That's all I have. Uh, okay. I appreciate the opportunity. And we'll get. To, Thank you. We'll, we'll answer those questions um, when we get through the all the testimony. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Looks like we're just. Tonight, so. Oh, sure, please. I'll be quick. I'm at Five Cedar Avenue. Come on up to the mic so we can Sorry. pick it up. Yeah, it needs to come into. Hi, the I'm Paul Runquist. I live at Five Cedar Avenue, and I share the previous speaker's concerns. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else? All right. Something comes up. Raise your hand. Oh, sure. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> Tom Weibel. I'm at Seven Cedar Avenue, and I'll jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, you know, share those concerns as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. One more. Um, oh, yes. Uh, might as well as well. I'm um, Jeremy Carbone. I'm at 23 Cedar Avenue. Uh, I think there are great concerns that were raised. Um, at the same time, uh, would, I think the proposed building is a significant improvement to an empty lot and also an improvement to the building that was there previously before that had gotten torn down. So, um, assuming that there's adequate addressing of the concerns, very much looking forward to the, to the project. Thanks for your comments. Thank you all. All right, anybody else? Did you get it? Okay. Um, an interesting point was raised that we hadn't probably addressed before, but there is some uncontrolled pedestrian crossing at 355 we know about there. Does this project affect it in any way? I mean, is there any, because I think the sidewalk would stay, the right of way and the sidewalk itself along Frederick Road would be unaffected by this project. Is that fair? Correct. Yeah. And your generating traffic is probably coming from your own parking lot most of the week. Is that fair, too? Correct. Yeah. Um, but maybe to answer the question from, from your team, what are the uses for the building proposed? Uh, probably a law office. Uh, we will not be open on Sundays, uh, maybe Saturdays, but very light. Um, staffing clientele for a brief period of time on Sundays. We know how busy that church is, St. Martin's Church, and the new church that's on the adjacent to that our building. Um, it probably will not be open on Sundays. Yeah. Okay. And and I, I won't put you on the spot about use of the parking lot for anybody else. That's something you guys could could work out with your neighbors later. Um, that that's not something we can address tonight if it's not proposed. So, but I think I think the proposal on the table and staff can address this. You know, later on, if there's any opportunity to, to leverage some of that unused parking on a Sunday or something, please consider it. But but we'll leave it up to you all to discuss with the, the neighbors. I, I do think the one key question or point is that you're anticipating that all of the parking needs for your building will be handled in your parking lot. You're not, you know, that lot is sufficient. You're not contributing to the street parking challenges that the, that the neighborhood has um, with what you're anticipating. Correct. Not expected, no. Great point. And that would have been part of why the parking calculations drove you to that little space as they weren't just mm. dropped in there arbitrarily, right? And there's also a bus stop right in front of the site. Okay. Access to public transportation. Um, and, and I think to reassure some of the neighbors, if as the building matures and the, the it's leased up and things start to happen in whatever pattern they happen, and um, our staff's available to to work through any things that might that might need to be thought of, thought about it or, or, or worked on if there is an issue with whether it's pedestrian safety or cross access for cars or whatever that parking impact might be. We know they work constantly with neighbors, neighborhoods to try to work through those things when they when they crop up. So don't feel like it's a the issue's over tonight if if you still have concerns later on. Um, neighborhood services are, are wide open to addressing those if, if a problem should arise. Um, anything else? Did I miss anything in the um, Ingress and egress out of um, 355. Oh, great access. point. Um, Jasmine, can you address what the, the curb cut restrictions might be there? Um, so we know, so in the CD zone, the envision was to have not have so many curb cups on Frederick Avenue. Um, so that this proposed curb cut on Cedar Avenue kind of fits in that envision of the, the CD zone, kind of the master plan of eliminating a lot of the curb cuts on there. Um, I do want to know, um, 
on the site plan. Um, they were uh, supposed to, uh, they have a recorded easement or something with the additional uh, adjacent property owners. So just in case they develop that with all the traffic can go behind the buildings rather than go out on Frederick Avenue. Right, so future development yeah. ha actually has a secondary <coughs> road planned for, yeah. you know, I wouldn't be around, but the next set of people <laughs> be around to sort of keep that secondary road, which is great. And maybe to go back and, and give it some scale, because now it occurs to me, on that site plan, if you put it up again, the setback issue, if you can kind of describe what that is, <coughs> so people understand the, the scale of it and why it's not really impacting Frederick Road, but... Go ahead and explain that if you would please. No, which setback are you are you talking about the landscape perimeter? In the in the, um, the public side. comment, <clears throat> they raised the issue of the set the setbacks and the impact to access from three fifty five and pedestrians going by the site. And I don't think it's an impact, but I, I just wanted you to describe where the where the setbacks lay on this plan and relative to where things like sidewalks and curb cuts are. Yeah. So, let's see. Okay. So, a lot of the, the side, sidewalk, all that's gonna be maintained. Um, so, look, if he's about to, this, are you talking about the front of the? It, it was part of the comments, so if you could just explain where they are. The, the building set back 13 feet from the property line oh. along Frederick Avenue. There's a 10 foot public utility easement as long as well that runs right. perpendicular or parallel, sorry, to that right of way line. Um, the building can't be located any part of it within the public utility easement. The utility companies just won't allow that. So, so there's, there's a, at least a built in 10 foot setback from the property line guaranteed because of the utility easement. Yeah. So the net effect is it's actually set back farther than some buildings might be. On, on a similar site if it didn't have the PUE there. Yeah. And I do want to Correct. note that they, uh, as part of this project, they had uh, dedicated additional um, right-of-way to 355 as part of the master plan for Frederick Avenue with, with the BRT. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why that building is also, and the <coughs> property is set further back than the, the other buildings. Yeah, when you look at the site plan, there actually is two lead walks that kind of fan out from the front entrance. The majority of those lead walks are actually within the state's right-of-way for uh, Maryland 355. So there's additional setbacks from the actual curve of the road beyond just the 13 feet from the property line. And, and then to be clear, on the Cedar Avenue side, the full sidewalk and easement is preserved. There's no there's no constraint on on that what the walkway is that right? Yeah, the easement wraps the street, the corner. Okay. Just good to good to make make clear. One of the exhibits, I think, not confusing, but might have been a little bit misleading because it only goes to the property line and not to the curb. So it looks like the building is really close to the street, but it's not. I mean, there's more there with the right of way. Yeah, it's, it's twenty-five feet. From yeah. The curb. Yeah. Oh. All right. Great. Um, any? By the way, do we get any hands up on the online? No. Okay. All right, uh, Jasmine, recommendation, please. Okay, so staff recommends that the Planning Commission, based on the exhibit submitted, the applicant's testimony, and the staff report, findings and recommendation, grant SP-9631-2023, EMB-9630-2023, and parking waivers, uh, finding in conformance with sections 24-170 and 24-171 of the city zoning ordinance. Any questions on the recommendation? Nope. Any concerns or discussion? All right, is there a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, um, that the Planning Commission, based on the exhibit submitted, the applicant's testimony, and the staff report, findings, and recommendation grant SP 9631-2023, ENV 9630-2023, and parking waiver, finding it in conformance with Section 24-170 is 24-171 <coughs> of the City Zoning Ordinance. Second. So moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. You know, thanks very much. Good Thank luck. I hope much. Get, get Thank started you very much. Spring. Great. All right. Um, that takes us to um, from the commission. Um, Sharon, can I start with you, please? Uh, happy to be home. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, hope you all had a great holiday. Um, everything's good. Good to be back. All right. 
Yeah. Nothing for me. All right. Lloyd? Uh, I just want to wish Danny, if he's watching, a speedy recovery from all of us and hope you're feeling well and look forward to you coming back on the dais. You're here. Nothing for me. I'll second that about Danny. I hope you're I hope you're watching. <laughs> so that you can win. <laughs> Recovering, uh, he will. Hope you're, hope you're feeling well soon. Um, I guess that goes to from the staff, uh, Greg. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a number of upcoming dates for everybody. Um, we have a joint work session coming up on Monday, January 16th. Um, that is going to be on the Metro Metropolitan Grove Stevenson SDP. Um, and then the we have another joint work session scheduled for Monday, February 26th. Um, that is going to be on the retool project. And then a follow-up work session on that same topic for March 11th. Um, I have sent out emails polling availability. Um, I have not heard back from everybody yet, so if you could let me know your availability, that'd be as soon as possible. Um, and then just a reminder, the next meeting is Wednesday, January 17th. Other than that, Happy New Year, and I have nothing else. How's the agenda looking for the 17th? Is there... You will have topics, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. John, how's it going? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you as well. You. And I'd like to just like to congratulate Chair Bauer and Vice Chair Kaufman. Thank you for serving the city in this capacity for yet another year. And thank you another especially year. for your many, many years of service to um, the city. And that's it tonight. That's it. No news from any of the big development projects. Oh, there's lots of good news, but uh, stay tuned. Okay. I'll save it for another day. All right. Sounds <laughs> good. All right. Anything else from anybody? I guess that's it. All right. If not, have a good evening. We're adjourned. <laughs>